Hello, it's time for chapter six of D-Day Dog, um, where I am reading um, D-Day Dog to my dog, Finn. And Finn is a bit more awake today because he's not been for his big run, have you? But he's really looking forward, as you can see, to chapter six. We'll see how long this chapter is, just so we can... Oh, oh blimey, it's a long one. This is about uh, an uh, eight minute job. Right, so chapter six. Um, and as we know, um, Jack has been to school and um, he's looking forward to going on the D-Day trip. But this is back to back home now. After school, and I'm reading it to you, Finn. Finn, I'm reading it to you. Good boy. Good lad. After school, Jack took Finn for a walk along the side of the river near where they lived. The river was deep and slow moving. Along the banks, there were signs that summer was coming. Green shoots force... Am I boring you? <laughs> and green shoots forcing themselves out of the ground and from the tips of the branches of the trees. A bank of bluebells on the far side of the river. The noise of birds chattering. Jack let Finn run frantically up and down the river bank, then dive in after a stick at least 20 times. Jack knew this would tire Finn out so that when Dad got home from work, they could play the D-Day game without worrying about the dog. A tired dog was a happy dog. Finn jumped in after the stick, emerging at each time dripping with water, scampering up to Jack and dropping the stick at his feet. Jack knew how... Jack knew not to take the stick immediately. He'd step back and watch Finn shake the water from his coat. Then Finn would stare at Jack, urging him to throw the stick again. Jack was learning how important eye contact was between him and the dog. It was like they could read each other's minds with just a glance. Or not. When it was time to go home, Jack didn't even need to tell Finn that he wasn't going to throw the stick again. One look at Jack and he came out of the water, Finn knew. Jack checked the time on his phone. Dad would be back soon. Time to liberate Europe, Jack said to Finn. And dog and boy walked home together. Dad's car was parked on the street at the front of the house when they arrived home. Excited, Jack let Finn into the garden, shut the garden gate behind him and was about to head into the house when he noticed that Finn was waiting by the open door instead of rushing in like he normally did. What's up, Finn? Then Jack heard shouting, an argument. A loud one, mum and dad, Jack decided to join Finn on the doorstep and sit it out. He put his arm around his dog, moved two empty milk bottles at from the edge of the doorstep and listened. I can't believe you looked at my letter, Dad's voice. I can't believe you've been hiding this from us, Mum was shouting. It was addressed to me. It was by my kit, which is the worst crime, Rob, Mum said. Me reading a letter in your bag or you going to fight in a war without telling me? Sorry. I lost you. Come on, Finn. Um, I've lost my place now. Jack heard no reply from his dad. So now I know about it, Mum said. Can I ask some questions? Sure, Dad said defensively. If you want to. I do want to, Mum said. Fine. Thank you. Mum was no longer shouting, but her voice was still seething with fury. When are you meant to be going? She asked. We mobilise in July, Dad replied. Probably deploy in late autumn. Where? Afghan. <laughs> That's Afghanistan, yeah? Mum paused. Where over 400 British soldiers have been killed since we got ourselves mixed up in there. Mum used a swear word at this point. Dad remained silent. Jack heard a rustling sound and his dad saying, That's helpful. What, Rob? Mum snapped back. Me throwing a screwed up piece of paper at you is helpful, is it? Is it more helpful than a hand grenade? How about I throw one of them at you? I feel like you've thrown one at me. Love, Dad said. Love? Mum shouted. Don't call me love. What do you think love is? Mum's voice was breaking up now. Jack could tell she was close to tears. It's what we had. Have. Sorry. It's what we have, is what he said. It's what we have, Dad said. Jack noticed Dad was... Dad's voice was meek now. Love, Rob, in this house, is about you and me working together as a couple, making joint decisions and doing our best for Jack and not you going off on your own and making a decision that will send shockwaves through his world and mine. 
He's pleased, Dad said. Another silence. Jack closed his eyes. He could tell that his dad had made a mistake by the fact that Mum was no longer talking. One thing Jack had learned about Mum was that so long as she was talking, even shouting, there was hope. It was when she was silent that there was real trouble. Are you reading along? Good boy. What? Mum asked. Dad's voice was weak. Jack's pleased. You told him. I, you told him last night, Mum interrupted, when I came in and you took Finn away. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right. When, when, you came, when you came in and took Finn away, I don't believe this, Rob. You talked to Jack before you talked it through with me. Of course he was pleased. He loves you. He worships you. If you do something, that's, that's, it's the best thing in the world. But do you really think he'll be pleased next time when he sees the news and some British army soldiers have driven over a landmine and been blown up? No answer. Well, Mum insisted. I don't know, Dad mumbled. Think about it, Rob. More silence. So why? Mum pressed. Why what? Why did you keep it a secret from me? Because you were scared I wouldn't want to let you go, is that it? Yeah! Dad was shouting now. To be honest, yes. Jack had been expecting this. Dad shouting. But he also knew that Dad shouting never lasted long. Jack waited, restraining Finn as he heard his mum crying now, his dad talking to her in a low and soft voice, then him crying too. Jack was desperate to hear what they were saying, but he couldn't. He had heard them argue before. Parents argue, that's normal. Finn, we're nearly finished. There's just a page, I think. But there was something different about their argument this time. Maybe it was because Jack was older now and he understood that Dad really wanted one thing and his mum wanted another, which meant that if things were going to get better, one of them was going to have to give in. Jack couldn't see either of them giving in. So what would happen? Were things going to get better? One paragraph. Jack had seen enough of his friend's parents split up to know that divorce happened a lot. What was going to happen to his parents? And then what would happen to Jack and to Finn? So that's chapter six, which is a bit sad, isn't it? Um, I'd forgotten how sad that is. Anyway, but um, I hope you enjoyed that, Finn. It's, um, don't worry, there's a happy ending. There's a happy ending. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I shall read you chapter number, um, was that six or seven? That was six. Chapter number, hang on, I better check. I'm a bit rubbish at this. Yes, that was six. So I'll read you chapter seven tomorrow. All the best to you and your families.